New Tech Lures production, Table Rock Lake with Bo James. Hey Bo, I've had several people write me and call me and they always say the same thing. Man, that hook set Bo has. You seen that hook set? And why don't you explain the principles of what like Tom Young out there in California calls a snap set, what I've heard you call a buggy whip, but basically it's when your lines out there and, and your jigs flat inside the bass's mouth you gotta send some slack down the line to snap it to vertical with our jig. Why don't you explain the, the theory and the principles and the physics behind that? Well most people they get a bite and they want to tighten their line up and then when they jerk all they're doing is just pull basically pulling the fish with you. It's just like if you got your arm straight out like this and I give Shane a big old pull, <laughs> he just follows his arm. Uh -huh. But now if you got your arm loose and I give it that same pull, it's going to knock your shoulder out. With a jerk. It's the same way. So this is the way that I've always done it. And the theory behind it is when you crack a whip, you're putting an S curve down the whip and so can you focus in on that oh you got the sun behind you let me switch up here okay see you got so you're setting the curve up so as if this is the end here as it straightens out that curve gets smaller and smaller infinitely and so what happens when it finally straightens out, the tip piss is the speed of sound, and that's what actually makes the crack. Well, if you will set the hook with slack in your line like that, then you're putting more impact on that jig. But you actually, dr you actually drop that tip. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, an yeah, inch let's or two. say I had a bite right there. I, I intentionally put some slack in it and come back up and if you're fishing real deep water you've got to drop your rod and come back up and be cranking at the same time I mean it takes a little practice but you're putting a lot more pressure on that jig see just doing that I ripped the the force of the water jerked the skirt down I didn't even have anything on it. That's how much force you're putting on that jig by nope. snapping it that way. And with the physics behind the new jig, explain why that type of hook set is so crucial. Because you're not going through soft tissue. When this thing rolls up, you're going through the top of their head. You're going through harder tissue and bone. Mm -hmm. So you have to have some force, a lot more force than you do getting soft tissue out here like you do with a normal jig. Plus as you snap set it like that, it helps the physics kick in mm -hmm. that are built into the jig. Yep. So work on your hook set people. You don't have to to do this softly. You can just set it for all it's worth and, and horse it for all it's worth once you got it set. Now I understand with the traditional jig maybe that sweep set works because with a traditional jig the weed guards fighting the hook over to the side so if you really pop it and that head hits it usually just splits your lips the weed guard knocks the hook over to the side and it just pops out of the mouth with the hook flat either that or if it does catch him you get a, a you know the hook goes in at a thinner penetration angler you just get the edge of the skin you know, that's the whole thing with that traditional center base weed guard. It's continually fighting the hook over to the side once it gets in close in the fish's mouth and he's shut down on it. It, it. it lays over flat. I don't care what anybody claims. It's going to knock it over on its side. Same thing will happen with this one, but it's designed from a flat position to physically, anytime it's between two parallel surfaces, it's gonna rotate the hook up and, and lock it there. So you're gonna hook them through the top of the head. 
Now we got a gentleman out in California who has some of our jigs, and and he wrote us yesterday, and and he said I caught a hook, uh, I caught a fish, and it rotated, but not to vertical, but to down, and he caught it dead center in the bottom of the mouth. So explain that. Well, because that does happen with this jig. Yeah, particularly if you're hanging over a limb. Because if you're hanging over a limb, your jig's like this. So, however, the fish comes up and gets it. So, if he grabs it this way, and and this is his bottom jaw, and this is the top of his head, but it's hanging like that, probably when you jerk, it's going to just go in like that and hook him through the bottom. And, you know, and that happens a lot when you're sometimes when you're hanging down and they come up like that because you don't know which way they they get it so it's possible to hook them in the bottom jaw once in a while you know next time we're sitting down with the fooster what we need to do and we haven't done this in a long time is a demonstration video of putting the jig upside down in the fooster and watch it rotating a full 180 to hook in the top of the mouth And while we're on the topic out here, uh, another thing this guy from California was saying is, I guess he had seen your video where you have your prototype one ounce. And he says, oh, I can't wait to, to see that one ounce. And um, why don't you talk about slip sinkers in front of your jig, like what you're doing now. Well, that you don't, that the you can thing is, maintain when you that get smaller a, profile. a one ounce jig, the head's a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. And so the bigger that head is, then the bigger the profile on your jig. But oftentimes, fish don't want a bigger looking jig. They want a smaller jig like this. So we were fishing out there further on the main lake off a ridge a while ago. And it's fishing 30 foot deep, but I'm throwing a 3 8 ounce jig, but I added a 3 8 ounce slip sinker with it. So that's basically 3 quarters of an ounce of weight. And that slip sinker won't hurts you at all. In fact, it's a benefit because when you stick a fish, the slip sinker slides up the line so the bass only has three eighths of an ounce of weight in his mouth instead of three quarters of an ounce or heavier. So it's a lot harder for him to ever get rid of the hook. So when he gets to flipping and that. trying to flip it out of his mouth, he has less yeah. weight to be flipping around. Yeah. Yeah, you, you still get the same fall ratio. That's just like where you're throwing a football jig. Well, football jigs for their weight have fairly compact profile. Well, you can take this a 3 8 ounce or a quarter ounce head. That's what we fish with. We hardly ever even fish with that half ounce anymore. You know, if it comes a time when they're wanting a bigger profile, I'll fish it, but most of the time, We'll use a quarter ounce head or a three eighths ounce head and just put a, a slip sinker on there, however much weight we need to get the fall rate right. And maintain maintain that small profile. Mm hmm Catch a lot more fish. Just another friendly tip from Bo James. Thanks, Bo.